hospitals Dimapur with several people sustaining injuries as the speeding vehicle rams into parlor near Toyoto showroom. Reportedly, driver under influence of alcohol loses control of his vehicle, causing life threat to the injured. SC pulls up Naglan government over extension given to DGP TJ Longcomer after supernation. Top court directs state government to recommend new names of eligible officers from state gather to UPSC for appointment of new police chief. In the wake of landslide and floods in 2022, Center approves Rs 17.20 crore as second installment of its share to Nagaland for the State Disaster Response Fund. During current financial year, Center has released Rs 8,764 crores as first installment of its share to 24 states including Nagaland. Season's first MDFA quarter-final round begins at Imkongmaran Sports Complex. First match played between Longpa Lomudan FC and Sports Society Soyim, whereby Longpa Lomudan clinches win with one goal. At least seven people, including two pilots, killed after a helicopter carrying Kedanath pilgrims crashes near Uttarakhand's Gaurat Chat. Tragedy occurs when the chopper flying from Kedarnath to the Pata crashes nearly two kilometers from the Kedarnath Adham Shrine. Hello viewers, I Lomika Chumi welcome you all to English Prime Time. Now news in detail. Another drink and drive case rattles Dimapur with several people sustaining injuries as a speeding vehicle rams into parlor near Toyoto showroom in Dimapur on Tuesday. CCTV footage shows that a lady was severely hit by the vehicle from behind while she was walking down the road. Reportedly, the driver was under the influence of alcohol who lost control of his vehicle, causing life threat to the injured. Furthermore, it has been learned that the driver was apprehended by the security forces after the incident, while the health condition of the lady is yet to be ascertained. The Supreme Court on Monday remanded a state government for extending the tenure of DJP TJ Longcomer after his supernation. The top court has asked a state government to put its house in order and ask it to provide a fresh names of eligible officers from the state gather to the UPSC for the appointment of new police chief. Meanwhile, a bench of justice, D.Y. Chandrachut and Hima Kohli, told the Nagaland government's counsel to inform the chief secretary that the court has taken a very grim view that DJP was part of the meeting where a proposal for the extension of tenure was passed. The bench directed state government to immediately send a list of impaneled officers for the post of the DJB to the UPSC. Notably, the UPSC will take a decision on the names suggested on the panel by October November 30. In view of the severe floods and landslides in the state, the Ministry of Home Affairs on Monday approved the advance release of Rs 17.20 crore to Nagaland for undertaking a relief during the monsoon season. Notably, the relief measure is the second installment of the central share of the State Disaster Response Fund to be released in advance to Nagaland for the year 2022-2023. According to a statement by the Ministry of Home Affairs, it has also been the effort of the government led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to provide help expeditionally to states and union territories affected by natural calamities. It may be mentioned that during the current financial year, the central government has released Rs 8,764 crore as the first installment of the central share of the SDRF to 24 states, including Nagaland.
Mokokchong District Football Association's first quarterfinals of the season began on Tuesday at the Imkong Marin Sports Complex in Mokokchong. Notably, the first match was played between Longpa Lomudam FC and Sports Society Soyim, whereby Longpa Lomudam clinched the victory with one goal, thereby paving the way as the first team to the semi-finals. It is to be mentioned that the second quarter finals will be played between Muanungsang Memorial Sporting Club and Spacious FC on Wednesday. To avoid any untoward incident caused by trees in Dimapul, nearly about 100 trees out of 400 tree fully grown tree species planted in 1992 from Nagajan Point a traffic point towards Circuit House Dimapul were cut down on Monday. Notably, the tree felling operation began on Monday as per the order which was issued by the Deputy Commissioner and Chairman District Disaster Management Authority Sachin Jaiswal on October 13, after the incident that killed two vendors and injured six when two trees were uprooted by gusty winds in the Naga shopping market supermarket area on October 12. It is to be mentioned that the decision has been taken after many other instances of uprooted trees nearly causing fatalities while in some broken branches damaging power lines. According to the officials, the work of cutting down the trees can be completed ahead of scheduled in view of the fast pace of work on the first day. Northeast Institute of Social Sciences and Research held its seventh graduation day for the outgoing students of 2022 batch on Tuesday at Chumukidima Peace Center. Joint Director and State Project Director of Higher Education, Menio Koli Kere graced the event as Chief Guest, while Principal of St. Joseph College of Jakama, Reverend Father Dr. George Kodolo, was the guest of honor. Both the dignitaries congratulated the students on their graduation and further Kerry gave advice on how to deal with the world. Department of Tourism and Art and Culture is gearing up for the 23rd Hornbill Festival scheduled from December 1 to 10. The department on Monday held a coordination meeting with all the tribal hohos in this regard at the Rectorate of Tourism Gov Conference Hall. Advisor Kehovi Yeptomi stated that every effort will be made to celebrate the upcoming 23rd Hornbill Festival in a grand manner. Yeptomi further said that Hornbill Festival has nothing to do with politics, so he hoped that Eastern Nagaland People's Organization will also take part in the festival despite the resolution to boycott participation in the festival if the demand for Frontier Nagaland was not fulfilled. In the meantime, he requested the tribal hohos to start with the preparations for festival at Kisama at the earliest. It is to be mentioned that this year, with the official recognition of the Kir tribe, there will be altogether 18 tribe morongs in Kisama. Tribes can come together and celebrate one festival that is Hornbill Festival. And we are very thankful to God that. It is well known to all, uh, uh, everyone. It is internationally recognized uh, festival. So this time, before election, this will be the last uh, Hornbill celebration we are going to have. That's why I request all the tribal leaders, our officers are there. Our tribal leaders so manukko operate kurgan this time to aro dosa time pra ekdom bhal pra celebrate kurba lagya koi ke nahi monti bhavna kura pra abna kan ke mati chidi kurba le thaga to we have extra tribe that was recognized this time tikiri tribes and we have given the allocation the site allotment has already been given ta kan pita ji kurba nahi karna sur kurba le asa to ama kan we have 17 plus 18 morons, tri tribal morons. 
All Naglin College Students Union organized a second term college at meet after COVID pandemic at Saku's Mission College on Monday. Former chairman of the Mapu Municipal Council, Y. Vikeho Awomi, graced the program as an introductory guest. And well known singer, writer, and director Sunap Lamtor performed his three collections of songs during the event. It is to be mentioned that 31 colleges participated in the program where the enrollment was more than 100 colleges from all around Nagaland. Furthermore, the event will continue till October 21, where prominent leaders will be welcomed as chief guests to share their thoughts and to motivate students in various aspects. Perspective of any tribe, region, or caste, or color, it is for the college's students, formed by the colleges. The All Nagaland College Students Union used to have its college admit binally. Uh, so this year we are having college admit. Next year we'll be having a uh, general conference. And our college admit starts from today, that is 17 to 21. It'll be for five days under the theme Metaphorosis. Tomorrow it will be the inaugural session, which will be graced by the Honorable Minister of State for Youth and Sports Services, Tourism, Information and Technology, Government of Mizoram. Uh, Sri Robert Roite. Naglen University, in collaboration with National Commission for Scheduled Tribe under Azatiga Amrit Mohotsav, organized a one day program on tribal heroes in freedom struggle in I Ihoshe Kinimi Hall in Naglen University at Lumami on Tuesday. During the program, Vice Chancellor of NU, Professor Jagdish Kumar Patnaya, graced as the chief guest. While advisor of NCST, Mukesh Kumar Sharma graced as the guest of honor and member of Akhil Bhartia Vanvasi Kalyan Ashram Kendra, A. Kulnari graced as the special guest. While addressing the people in attendance, the chief guest, Professor Jagdish, marked that such programs are the occasions that helps to understand oneself and to revisit one's history. Furthermore, during the program, a talk on contributions of the tribal heroes in freedom struggle was presented by the Professor of History and Archaeology, Professor Y. Ben Lota, while a talk on the role of NCST was delivered by advisor NCST, Mukesh Kumar Sharma. It is to be mentioned that students of different schools of social sciences, faculties and research scholars attended the program. Any other hero, because there are the, what, the, 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 the independence movement was not fought only by a few individuals. There are many people, hundreds, millions of people who fought, who were going behind Gandhi. Gandhi was the leader. There is no dispute about it. But what about these heroes going with the heroes that made that hero superhero? They have contributed. You cannot ignore the voiceless contribution of these people. That is the, the, the thing, that the thing I feel. I may be wrong in understanding this, but my feeling is that the occasion is to understand ourselves, to revisit our history, to reassess ourselves, and contribute for the futuristic plan of action so that with our academia, our thinking, our knowledge system can develop and enrich ourselves. Here I would like to also talk about the, the, the contribution of the constitution. Look at this wonderful thing. We have got a robust constitutional framework. Nowhere in the world such kind of constitution is happening. You may talk about the American constitution. Fair enough. That's good enough for their society. You may talk about the French system, they have changed five times, fifth republic. You may talk about the, 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 the British system, they don't have a constitution. Forget about having one. We have a constitution which is a robust framework, a robust framework, which enables us and provides space to everybody. 
A huge quantity of Ganja word rupees, a 3.30 crore, have been seized by Assam police from a truck in Karimganj district on Monday. As informed by Assam police, the truck came from Tripura site and was intercepted in Churaibari area. Meanwhile, police apprehended the truck driver identified as Manik Singha and registered a case under NDPS Act. Two Indian Reserve Battalion policemen have been arrested by the Arunachal Pradesh Police in Itanagar for possessing drugs. Reportedly, over 142 grams of suspected heroin were seized from the two arrested policemen on Monday. The accused policemen have been identified as Prem Dorji and Yom Tape. Both of them belong to Indian Reserve Battalion and currently posted in security cell Itanagar in Arunachal Pradesh. The Supreme Court on Tuesday said that on September 29, it will hear the police challenging the remission of a sentence and release of 11 convicts in the 2002 Bilkis Bannau gang rap case and murder of her seven family members during the Gujarat riots. Notably, a bench of justice, Ajay Rastogi and C.T. Ravi Kumar, directed that the reply filed by the Gujarat government be made available to all parties. Meanwhile, the petitioner have been given time to file the reply to the affidavit filed by the Gujarat government. It is to be mentioned that the Gujarat government on Monday defended before the Supreme Court its decision to grant remission to the 11 convicts in the Bilkis Bannau case, saying remission was granted as they completed a 14 years a sentence in prison and their behavior was found to be good. In the meantime, a day after the Gujarat government disclosed that the center approved the release of 11 convicts in the Bilkis Bannau rape case, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi on Tuesday said, Prime Minister Narendra Modi supports a rapist in reality, even though he talks about respecting women from the Red Fort. Helicopter carrying Kedanath pilgrims in Uttarakhand from Apatha crashed on Tuesday. Seven people who were on board, including two pilots, were killed during the incident. As rescue operations are underway, the Directorate General of Civil Aviation ordered a detailed investigation on the incident. After China's BF.7, India detected its first case of Omicron subvariant BQ1 during the genome sequencing of a Pune resident's sample on Monday. State Surveillance Officer Pradeep Awate said that high-risk patients should follow precautions. It is to be mentioned that BQ.1 and BQ.1.1 are two descendants of Omicron's BA.5 subvariant. The war against illegal drug trade in Northeast region continues as Aizwal, a battalion of 23 sector Assam rifles, under the aegis of Inspector General Assam Rifles on Monday, seized 92.550 metapetam tablets at a Falcon Ven area in Aizwal district of Mizoram. The seized consignment of a meth is worth rupees 30 crore in the international market and one person is under custody. Based on specific input, a joint operation was launched by a joint team of Assam Rifles with Excise and Narcotics Department, ISOL, where the drugs were seized. Furthermore, the seized consignment of the drugs has been handed over to the Excise and Narcotics Department, Mizoram, for further investigation. Student activist Umar Khalid's bail plea has been denied by the Delhi High Court on Tuesday. 
in the larger conspiracy case of Nortis Adeli. Notably, Khaled has been in custody since September 2020. Meanwhile, a division bench of Justice Siddharth Mridul and Justice Rajneesh Bhatnagar dismiss Khalid's appeal, challenging the trial court order, denying him bail in the case. It is to be mentioned that Khalid was arrested for allegedly attending various meetings from December 2019 to February 2020 as part of a conspiracy to cause riots in Northeast Delhi. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M. K. Stellan will pass a resolution against the central government's Hindi imposition in the State Assembly on Tuesday. Stellan will urge the Union government not to accept the recommendation made in the report of Parliamentary Committee on Official Language which was submitted by Union Home Minister Amit Shah to President Draupadi Murmu on September 9. Following the recommendation made in the report of Parliamentary Committee, Tamil Nadu government decided to make Hindi the medium of instruction instead of English in all central government institutions like IITs, IIMs, AIIMs, central universities and Kendriya Vidyalas. Union Minister Anurag Thakur on Tuesday announced that the government has approved the minimum support prices for all rabi crops for marketing season 2023 to 2024. The MSP for lentil has been increased by rupees 500 per quantal for the year 2023 2024, while the MSP for barley has been increased by rupees 100. के नेतृत्व में अध्यक्षता में मंत्रिमंडल की बैठक हुई और कैबिनेट कमेटी ऑन इकोनॉमिक अफेयर्स ने आज जो 2022-23 के सीजन के रबी की छह फसलों के न्यूनतम समर्थन मूल्य यानी एमएसपी निर्धारित किए हैं आज जो वृद्धि की गई है वो मैं आप सब के सामने रखना चाहता हूं ये जो हमारा रबी फसल के लिए न्यूनतम समर्थन मूल्य गेहूं में 110 रुपए वृद्धि की गई है 215 रुपए से बढ़ाकर इसको 2125 रुपए किया गया है जौ को एक 100 रुपए बढ़ोतरी की गई जो 1635 से बढ़कर 1735 किया गया है चना में 105 रुपए की वृद्धि हुई जो 5230 से बढ़कर 5335 रुपए आप किया गया है मसूर में 500 रुपए की वृद्धि की गई है जो 5500 से बढ़ाकर 6000 रुपए किया गया है रेप सीड जो सरसों 400 रुपए की वृद्धि की गई है 5050 से बढ़ाकर For the ongoing festive season Indian Railways is running 2561 trips of 211 special trains to manage the extra rush of passengers till Chhat Puja this year the Indian Railways has notified additional 32 special services to ensure smooth and comfortable travel. Furthermore, special trains have been planned to connect major destinations across the country on railway routes. The terror of stray dogs has yet again come to light as a seven-month-old child was mauled to death by a stray dog inside a housing society in Noida on Monday. According to officials, the infant received serious injuries and was hospitalized for treatment, however, succumbed to his injuries at the hospital. Notably, the parents of the child are construction workers and both were engaged in construction work inside the society and when the incident occurred. Meanwhile, the residents of the housing society protested and blocked the roads on Tuesday, while Noida Authority officials said that the civic body would construct four shelter homes for stray dogs, which is under progress, and that they have started sterilizing stray dogs in 2017, and 40,000 dogs have been sterilized so far. However, it was learned that the residents of the housing society were not satisfied with the authority 
and continued their protests. कल शाम को या दिन में जब भी वो एक बच्चे को किसी कुत्ते ने काटा है जो भी घटना हुई है वो बहुत दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण है सबसे पहले तो मैं उसके लिए आपके साथ आपके दुख में सहभागी हूँ और उसी के क्रम में हम लोगों ने कार्रवाई शुरू की पहले हमने स्टिलाइजेशन शुरू किया दूसरे पे फिर हमने ये शुरू किया कि अगर डाक बाइट कोई डाक जो है बार बार काट रहा है तो उसको जो है ले जाके सेल्टर होम में रखना और एक महीने तक उसको सुधारना और उसके बाद वापस छोड़ना कार्रवाई स्टार्ट हो गई है उसमें चार आर सामने आए थे उनके यहाँ जो Indian low-cost airline Indigo successfully test-landed its aircraft at the newly constructed Dongi Polo Airport in Itanagar on Tuesday. It is to be mentioned that the first-ever airport will be inaugurated by the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, on October 28. Notably, the new airport will boost the air connectivity of Arunachal Pradesh, which will connect the northeastern state with the rest of the country. India's 1983 World Cup winning hero, Roger Binney, has been elected as the 36th President of the Board of Control for Cricket in India and replaces Saurav Ganguly on Tuesday. The 91st Annual General Meeting of the BCCI was held in Mumbai, where Binney was the sole candidate who filed the nomination for the BCCI chief. Meanwhile, Jay Shah will continue to serve as the BCCI secretary and Ashish Seller replaced Arun Singh Dumal as the new treasurer. On the other hand, Rajiv Shukla remains in his position as a vice president of the board and Arun Dumal has been appointed as the Indian Premier League chairman. Notably, Beni has played a total of 99 matches for India and has backed 47 wickets in tests while picking 77 in ODIs. Netherlands got inch closer to Super 12 of ongoing ICC Men's T20 World Cup by clinching victory against Namibia in another low-scoring thriller by nine wickets on Tuesday. Notably, it is their second straight victory in the tournament. It is to be mentioned that the Super 12 round matches will start from 22nd October. The top four teams from the qualifier round will be qualified for the Super 12 round. In the meanwhile, Pat Cummins appointed as new ODI captain of Australia, succeeding Aaron Finch in the role. Cummings will lead Australia in the upcoming ODI World Cup, which will be held in India. After years of demand to organize a women's IPL, finally the Board of Control for Cricket in India on Tuesday decided to organize the first ever women's Indian Premier League from the year 2023. The BCCI gave note for organizing the tournament during its 91st annual general meeting in Mumbai. Women's Indian Premier League is set to start as a five-team tournament next year, immediately after the conclusion of the ICC Women's T20 World Cup on February 26. As per reports, a BCCI's proposal plan consists of 22 matches and each squad will feature 18 players, with a maximum of 6 overseas players. More than 5 overseas players cannot feature in a playing 11 at the same time, though BCCI has not finalized the schedule of the WIPL. It will end before the men's IPL. The men's IPL is likely to start in March next year. The wait for the Ballon d'Or winner is finally over as Karim Benzema has won the men's Ballon d'Or 2022 award on Monday in Paris. Real Madrid captain and French forward Karim Benzema was the most speculated player among fans already for the prestigious award. The 34-year-old Frenchman had a marvelous 2021-22 season as Real Madrid won the Champions League title 
following a wonderful Spanish La Liga season. Furthermore, Barcelona's star Alexia Pudlis grabbed the Ballon d'Or famine. Meanwhile, the five times Ballon d'Or winner Ronaldo has been ranked on 20th place this year and seven-time winner Lionel Messi failed to make it to the shortlist for the first time since 2005. Dear viewers, that's all we have for now. Keep watching Nagaland TV. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas.